happy November, everybody. Hello. I'm going to be recapping my October in a kind of narrative vlog, as many of the videos are out of context with what was going on, or I just don't have video footage of what happened, but you really need to hear about what was happening during these days. Yep. I can't even get all my hat in the frame. This is the best I can do. Ooh. I make a cute witch. I'm gonna need to take my hat off so that way I don't accidentally set it on fire and then set myself on fire. This October was a lot different than previous ones because I went out and did a lot of Halloween themed activities with my friends or just in general go out instead of staying at home, which I'm really glad I did. Although it was a lot and it's going to be a lot to edit in. The first thing that happened was I definitely got to talk with my friends a lot more. I definitely got to see my friends a lot more. I was Skyping Johnny um, a few times this month and we talked about different things like how his vegan diet is going and I was kind of more like a challenge to him instead of just um, doing it for, diff for, the, for the normal reasons, you know. I found out that he enjoys Midnight Texas, the show on NBC, just as much as I do. And that he watched about like 10 of the episodes and such. I started watching it because um, the protagonist is Francois Arnaud, who is an actor that I've been following for a while. But yeah, Johnny got into it, of course, for like the more supernatural elements and gore. Oh, well, he's definitely going to get into season two with the demon possession and such. That's not a spoiler, right? No, it's not because uh, the cast talks about it throughout all the interviews beforehand. Johnny says he might actually be coming down this month in November or possibly in January. But either month we're planning to go hang out and probably even go to like one of those 21 and under clubs or even 21 and over clubs. I don't, I don't know anything about clubs. So I'm going to be scared, but Johnny's really excited to take me there. And I might invite my sister and her friends to come along as well so that way we we're in a bigger group. <laughs> Toward the beginning of the month, it was really funny because me and my friend Gabby, who lives in California, we got into this um, Instagram story war. It was basically just <laughs> making jokes and it all started when uh, Ethan Nestor, Crank Gameplays on YouTube, he kept replying to her Tumblr asks. And so I posted on my Instagram story that he has a crush on her, <laughs> even though she ha was already being like, no. And then it basically escalated to her saying that she will fight me, make a diss track about me. And then I ended up calling her a piglet because that's my nickname for her. I don't even remember where it started from. <laughs> really funny. My sister McKenna came into town probably like on the second Friday. I took her to Best Fest at my college campus. Uh, Best Fest is like, it's like a little carnival that they set up with foods and rides and activities. Um... We stayed there for like several hours, but most of the time was spent waiting in line. It was Disney level long lines. Even though the lines were shorter, it was still about 45 minutes just to get on one ride. Which is crazy. Cause I think they kept, I think they kept shutting down. And then, yeah. They only have so many seats. And then the lines... No, no, not the lines. The rides would be like five minutes long. Like, it's not standard level like ride time 
we were there for so long that <laughs> on the only two rides we got on, because it was taking so long, like both times after several minutes, I was like, I'm ready to get off now. I'm starting to get nauseous. I'm starting to get winded. Oh my God. <laughs> Together waiting for those two rides and then being on those two rides, it was about like two hours long and our parents were already coming back to get us. So in the end, we just looked around for some food. We got some churros and then I got, um, God, I, wouldn't, I don't want to call it face paint because it was just glitter along my eye. I thought it was really pretty. Like she let me choose the glitter colors and like where it was and how it looked. And she was a really nice lady. I don't know her name, but she was a really nice. She was really nice to talk to. Yeah, practicing socialization. But yes, Best Fest was fun. Um, I think that weekend, my cousin Aubrey had her baby shower. Um, oh, Aubrey's predicted to have her baby like only a few days before she graduates. So... Everyone's really worried about that. And she doesn't want to miss her graduation. Saturday morning, we went early with me and my mom and my sister and we helped all of our aunts set up. And it was a Winnie the Pooh theme and it was really, really cute. Yeah, there was um, centerpieces with flowers and little glass jars with uh, honeycombs and personalized M&Ms that they got for this I almost said ceremony, um, for the party. And there was a photo booth. I don't know if I got any footage of the baby shower games, uh, but I did get a lot of video of us setting up. Aubrey looked really, really beautiful in her white dress and such. And I was uh, taking a bunch of pictures and videos of them opening up their gifts that I got us sent to Aubrey. Um, but she needs to get like a hard drive first, I know that. Cause like, I, I, there's a lot of photos and video, like a lot, a lot. I've been practicing my cooking. Uh, I recently downloaded an app called Tasty from Buzzfeed, which has a bunch of recipes and I'm just going through and saving which ones I want. I already tried out this homemade mac and cheese one, which I thought was going to be way too cheesy cause it has like a lot of dairy it was like cups of milk and cheese and so much butter but um, in the end it didn't taste very cheesy which is weird so yeah we ate that mac and cheese with steamed vegetables which I really love in fact later that month um, we ate steamed vegetables again but I don't even remember with what midnight Texas season 2 premiered on October is God, I'm just going to pick a date, 27th. It was the Friday before Halloween. And this season is so much better than last season. I think it's because since it's season two, like they're trusted a lot more with budget and such. But Francois Arnaud's acting is so amazing. Um, it wasn't in episode one, but he's done possession scenes with like juggling three characters and that's amazing. But episode one was absolutely crazy with Manfred, spoilers, with, um, with Manfred being, having what they call demon cancer and basically it's corrupting his soul, turning him evil, making him have really violent desires to kill his girlfriend and all of his friends. And then he would bury them several miles from the town in this abandoned canyon, which is really, really intense. The acting that Francois Arnaud does 
with Manfred turning evil is very different from his usual portrayal of Manfred and then his previous roles that have been like slightly evil characters like this is more of a lawful yet chaotic kind of evil with his like intense desire to kill which is really great all the characters are, are doing really well with acting um they sent away creek for this season she's only going to be appearing in a few episodes um I didn't really like how they wrote Creek last season. She didn't really feel like an established character. So I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not that they sent her away this season. But it's been going really well so far. It's only been two episodes and I can tell that it's a lot more interesting this week. It's like Francois Arnaud said in interviews, like they definitely got more ambitious, the writers did, with this season. The weekend after Best Fest and Aubrey's baby shower, I went to my best friend Sarah's um, concert, choir concert up at Shriner University and the theme was colors and the ticket, the ticket is very beautiful. I'll have to show it. I'm really proud of Sarah because she was in almost all of the songs in all the different groups and everything. Like if you take out, if you don't count all the solos, she, Sarah was in like all of them but one, which is amazing. My favorite part, and I wasn't even going to film the actual concert until they started singing Welcome to the Black Parade. And Sarah's dancing was indescribable. <laughs> It's indescribable because it's like a little white bunny trying to figure out what being emo is. You, you can tell like the, the one girl in front of her has obviously had like an emo phase before, but Sarah's in the back in a black button up, just throwing her head around, just trying. And it was the cutest thing ever trying to see her be emo. Oh, great. Yeah. Me and my parents got to sit with Sarah and her family and her boyfriend, William. And afterwards, we all went out to dinner. And I snuck up behind Sarah in line and scared her. And then she almost slapped me. Sarah? Yeah, I saw Sarah like... Oh, God. It was like out of five days in a row, I saw her three or four times. Because the day after the day after her choir concert, we went to go vote. Me, Sarah, William, her mother, and her brother, Tim. And it was so much faster than I thought it was going to be. Like, I brought my school book. I was fully prepared to, like, read through all of my um, assigned readings while waiting in line. But it only took, like, I would say maybe 20 minutes total which was really good because at first we were thinking of going to UTSA but that obviously would have been a much longer line but we just went to a local library instead. In fact, um, I don't remember if it was while we were in line to vote or after the concert at dinner but William and Sarah agreed to come with me and my sister on our Europe trip that we're taking in a few years when Kenna turns 21. So that's going to be great. Like, it's going to be great to have them with us and we can have a bigger group and more likely we could go without an adult, which is going to be scary for me because I think I've only ever been outside of the city without, oh no, I've only been outside of the state without my parents once in junior year of choir when we went to Florida and I was so nervous I puked before that. Is that too is that too much information? A quick note, my feminist theory teacher used my essay that we're working on right now as an example for the other students. I'll have to pull it up and show you. But like she basically had us sign this uh, paper that said that she could um, show our essays to future students. I thought it was only be future students. 
um, as an example, like if she found them well structured enough and interesting enough, and I'm really happy that out of the three that she has that she pulled currently for the current students, which I didn't know she was gonna do, was mine. Makes me happy whenever teachers think that my work is like good enough to show as an example. Makes me happy. This is my second time recording the second half of this video because when I recorded, I didn't realize that I didn't turn on my microphone and the microphone quality of my camera just by itself is horrible. So I gotta do this all over again. So I was at the nightmares. Yeah, I had three nightmares this October and they were all kind of Halloween themed in a way, which is weird because one of them was maggots and I was shaking maggots out of something and no matter how hard I shook it or how long, it, it was just hundreds and hundreds of maggots like falling out and they were just piling up. That's all I remember from the first dream. The second dream as well, I don't remember much. And what I remember is turning around and seeing a serial murderer, maybe like one of those famous Halloween slasher villains, but I don't remember who it was. I just remember turning around on this dark, foggy road and seeing him and knowing he's gonna try to kill me. And that's when I woke up. And then the third dream, which is the most specific one, was actually influenced by what happened at Fright Night, which I'll get to later. But it was a witch in front of a fire and a, f a fence was behind her. It had an anti-septic eye poster, uh, one of Jack Septic Eye's evil alter egos. And she was saying, if you think of betraying him, you're not allowed to leave. So yeah, it is very rare that I even have nightmares. Um, but to have three in the same month, it's never happened before. But uh, I just rolled with it. It's Halloween. Just do things out of the ordinary, even if you didn't want to have a nightmare. Um, speaking of like things that I usually wouldn't do during October and in the spoopy season, um, I watched a lot more horror gameplays that Jacksepticeye did, specifically Jacksepticeye. I've been watching a lot of his videos, but I, I watched him play Layers of Fear. I watched him play the Walter Scott personality test, which is a very intense game. And it's not even like jump scare or like aesthetical intense, but it's basically just like, it makes the person that's playing it start thinking, what if this isn't a test? What if this isn't a game? What if we're doing this so that we can get into your house and get you? Yeah, and there was like a cheap jump scare, I will admit. But yeah, they, they at least definitely built it up. <laughs> the events that I went to for Halloween, um, mainly I went to um, Fright Fest. Do you want to say I'm sorry beforehand to any Fright Fest cast members that I accidentally punch out of fear or tackle? Or that Sarah slaps? Me, uh, Sarah, William, Tim, and even Sarah's mom, but she but was, she was only there for a little bit. Um, we all went to Fright Fest together. Um, Sarah and William had invited me, and it was like uh, only like a handful of hours after we went to go vote. So I like rushed through my homework and I went with them and I was like debating the, those few hours between voting and Fright Fest if I was actually going to go because I knew that there was going to be all those scary actors running around 
and I really don't like the idea of someone in a terrifying costume coming up to me and like invading my personal space even though I just kept reminding myself they can't actually touch you. I ended up actually going and the first thing they did after getting um, fast passes was go to one of the haunted houses, the newest haunted house. And ugh, I actually went in. But I swore I was only going to go in if I got to hold onto the back of someone's shirt and it ended up being Sarah's brother Tim. So I have to say sorry and thank you to Tim for letting me basically clutch onto the back of his shirt throughout the entirety of the haunted house. I think we were the only ones in there. It was Tim, then me, then Sarah, then William. And the entire time I was just holding onto his shirt as tightly as I could. And I was just staring at the floor, half the time closing my eyes. And I was just like, so walking through, just letting Tim lead me through those really tight corners. I kept my eyes closed and on the floor the entire time, except for the beginning where I just saw this tight claustrophobic hallway of just shelves of creepy, creepy antiques, even though the haunted house is supposed to be circus themed. I guess that more of it is on the surface circus theme, but I didn't look up. I actually remember walking through something like hanging from the ceiling, but I didn't open my eyes. Mm -mm. And at one point the floor started shifting, but I'm the only one that remembers that. So did it happen? I don't know. The entire time I was just waiting for someone to jump out, preparing myself. And it was it only happened three times, even though like it felt like forever. It, in the end, the haunted house took less time than I thought. We were out bef before I would have expected. And there's only three actors that ever jumped out at us. And the first one, <laughs> he actually tried to like get in my face again. And, but, and at that point I just got annoyed. So that technically fake bravery. <laughs> I, <sighs> yeah. And I remember staring at my feet and just counting one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Remember to breathe. Oh my God. Don't let anything pop out. Remember to breathe. And then once we got out, I was still holding onto Tim's shirt for like at least another minute because I just didn't want to let go. My body wasn't registering that we were out of the haunted house. I hated it, but no one can tell me that I would probably enjoy it if I just tried it. I hated it. Yeah. But at least I did it once. <coughs> Ew. Yeah, the haunted house is definitely what inspired the last nightmare. And then after we got out, we actually ran into Sarah's mother and I half jokingly held on to her and was like, I need an adult. <laughs> and I was just hugging her. I think she was happy to that I um was was doing it. I think everyone else also found it very funny. <laughs> and we got on the carousel for a bit, which was great. I love the carousel. I like the medium to small rides and everyone still wanted to go to all the haunted houses like because apparently they they do this like every year but I refused to go into any more and so we made a plan where like I was just gonna wait outside the haunted houses and just wait for them to come out because they have fast passes so it would be much much quicker than if they were in normal lines and so after the the next one we got some food and at this point we were all wondering why aren't the actors out because they should have been out by now because it was like quite late I think it was already like at least 7 30 and I had we had heard that like they were supposed to come out at like 6 37 after eating um we split up because Sarah said that she would go on some rides with me. 
Um, so that way, like, I was just by myself the entire time while they were um, at the haunted houses. Okay, so, no. After we ate, I got mixed up for a bit. After eating, we went to the Rockerville area of Six Flags. And they were in line for a long time at that haunted house. And I was just waiting around. And I was near this, like, really interesting looking bus with a lot of smoke coming out and flashing red lights. But I thought that it was... It was fine for me to sit there until this most horrifying blaring horn sounded and it like it was so bad it like vibrated like my heart <laughs> and I I hated that not even when the actors came out which apparently that signals for the actors to come out or switch places or anything not even the actors in that area were as scary as that horn and not knowing when it's gonna sound off again it's it went off twice while i was in that area and both times it was horrible <laughs> it was a jump scare for me and i'm gonna say everyone else because no one else liked it and i basically hid inside the candy store and it was wasn't as much to avoid the actors which there were only a few, and one of them was just sitting on the ground, really. It was mostly in case the horn went off again. And, ugh, it went off again when I went outside for a few minutes. So, yeah. And I was in that candy store for, like, a long time while, while they were in line for the haunted house, even with their fast passes. And then afterward, we split up. Because Sarah said that she would go on some rides with me, and so... William and Tim went to the next haunted house, which was called Buried Alive, which even the sound of it gives me anxiety. And then Sarah agreed to go on some rides with me, so we went back to the boardwalk and we went on like the Scrambler and um, another ride. And we had to go through this area of clowns to get back to the boardwalk. He had to go through one of the actor groups. And the actors didn't scare me as much as the props did. They were like giant, creepy clown heads popping out of jack-in-the-boxes that are like four times the size of a normal person. One of the clown actors did start approaching us, but I think because I was talking to Sarah and I was making eye contact with him while I was talking, he was like, oh, she's not gonna get scared. So he like turned the other way. And then after we went on those rides, we had to go meet William and Tim across the park. So we had to go through two of the areas again. I think we had to go back through the Rockerville stuff, but we were able to avoid the clowns. No, not the clowns. We were able to avoid the zombies because that the zombies were in that area. But And then we had to go um, near the cliffside near where the waterfall is and there it was supposed to be like people wielding chainsaws and wearing masks and such but the thing is they weren't as scary because they just look like um post-apocalyptic aesthetic <laughs> except one of them swung his sword right in my face while I was walking so what the fuck and then after Sarah and William and Tim went through their last haunted house, we um, jumped onto the Roadrunner because the park was closing soon. <laughs> and I, I love the Roadrunner. That's one of my favorite rides there, even though it's so fast that I feel like it's like bending my neck back the entire time. And then we left the park and um, we went home. And it was, I had a lot of fun at Fright Fest. I am not going to go back. I don't like the idea of actors chasing me around, even though I was able to pretend that I wasn't scared, as long as I had Sarah next to me. And I definitely did not like the haunted houses, and uh, truthfully, it's not worth going 
during that time because it's even more crowded just for the normal rides. So I won't be going back, but uh, at least I tried it and I got to see Sarah and hang out with William and Tim too. And then I did hang out with them on Halloween. Um, I had classes, so I wore my modern witch costume to school, except that when I had been ordering that dress, um, it was a bit too big because I got the sizing mixed up and I ordered a large because I, I wasn't sure if it was going to fit because of the straps and I wanted to make sure that like the one area that like it seemed to have more of like um, a tight fit on like my top which would either fit or not and if it was too tight then I couldn't do anything about it but if it was large I could at least pin it but I didn't have time to get it pinned in the morning so I was walking around class just like just having to keep readjusting it and when I was like walking between classes I had to like hold my arm across my middle to like keep it from moving too much and then I also had to wrangle with my hat although I did enjoy bringing my hat to class later that night mom was able to help me pin the dress so that it fit better and then she was also able to help me put these little guys on my hat so that way I can stick hairpins in it and then clip it to my head because um, <laughs> just it by itself on my hat is too small. I got a big head. It doesn't take much to knock it off. But yeah. Yeah. I might end up like decorating that hat and like um, looking for some like dark makeup and probably practicing photography with it. But for right now, like it was, it was fun to wear that to school and actually dress up and participate. It kind of put me in the season and made my day a little bit more fun. Whoop. Um, I didn't do much for Halloween night. Um, I went with Sarah and William to Dave and Buster's. At first we were going to go downtown, but then they said like, no, it's definitely going to be too crowded. So we went to Dave and Buster's and it wasn't as crowded as I would have thought for, um, Halloween, like a holiday. But basically I am really happy that I did experience Halloween this year. I didn't do it last year and it was definitely not as fun. But yes, I'm going to keep this costume for next year. Keep being a modern witch, just like I was, uh, well, my last costume. I was a flapper girl for like two or three years. I could definitely get a lot of mileage out of this costume. I'm really glad that I had an eventful month, even though I kind of slightly hope that this month isn't as eventful <laughs> but I did enjoy my Halloween I hope you did too bye